trying to get some facts straight for the um, next book on liner locks. Liner locks are really one of the most simple mechanisms, but if you take flour and sugar and put it together and make a cookie, there must be a thousand ways to make a cookie. So turns out there's quite a bit of detail can go into a line a lot. And I was talking to Jason Guthrie from South Africa at the uh, Gathering Knife Show. And um, he's been experimenting with some uh, different ways to make a frame lock. So basically, it's just the simple lock face on the uh, on the tang, and then you got the lock bar coming over. But what he has done apparently is placed a piece of tungsten carbide in the face of the lock bar. Problematic with these is this is hardened steel on the blade, and this is titanium, which has some great properties of being resilient and it does not rust. It has a memory, so where you bend it, it'll go back to, and essentially that means it's a leaf spring. But the wear characteristics of titanium which is somewhere around uh, Rockwell 36 or something. Um, and the back of the blade tang, which is probably uh, around Rockwell 56 uh, to 60, is going to disproportionately start to wear the titanium. Also, titanium has a, a, a problem similar to aluminum where it will gall. And um, that also affects the wear characteristics. The solution a lot of people have come up with is to uh, carbonize the uh, face of this. I, generally it brings a rock up to around 80 so it's much harder uh, using a piece of tungsten carbide though which has a very high high rock well uh, up in the 80s and it does not wear with uh, any of the, the same characteristics as titanium in fact it'll out wear the lock face. So Jason goes over this pretty well and uh, we have a picture of his knife and I hope we all can learn something. Hi, uh, my name is Jason Guthrie. Um, I'm from South Africa. Uh, we are here at the USN Gathering G7. Um, I'm releasing a new uh, type of lock here, although this is still the Reeve Integral Lock. We've just done a little bit of a modification to it. Um, I call it the GTR Lock. That refers to Guthrie Tungsten Insert. And what you've got here is a tungsten carbide insert that's press fitted into the lock bar. We've got three major advantages to this. Uh, first main advantage is obviously lock wear uh, is greatly reduced. You've got a 90 Rockwell rating on tungsten carbide so it's extremely hard and your lock wear is is, is greatly reduced uh, second main advantage is your tungsten carbide has got very little bite up on the steel so lock stick is is greatly reduced uh, by, re by reducing it that much we can we can take our lock bar tension to a hundred percent which means we can guarantee that there will no be there will be no um, there will be no uh, what's the word lock there'll be no lock rock or vertical blade play because you never have the issue of 
the lock wearing to the point beyond the lock bar has been tensioned to. So, yeah, by, by, by having that lock stick reduced greatly, you can get your tension up to 100%. The third rule, the third um, advantage, which is, which I think is a, is a quite a breakthrough in, in, in the design, is you are moving the lock wear, the, 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 the wear from the lock bar to the blade. Um, although this is very, this table, this will take a very long time before it gets to this stage. Um, when you wear the the lock blade, you actually uh, sorry. When you wear the blade, you are you are decreasing slope force, okay, and making the lock more reliable as the lock wears away. Right, opposed to if the lock bar wears, you're increasing slope force because your angles are are starting to match. You know, if you've got like the eight degree uh, eight degree angle on your lock face, meeting your your lock bar. When that starts to wear down to that same eight degrees, slope force increases, lock slip increases. You have a chance of failure, uh, or more gets become uh, the chances of lock failure increase. But now, by wearing the the angle on the lock face down to a flatter incline, uh, you get your sl your slope force is decreased and the reliability of the lock goes up because you now have a, a flat angle that is pressing up against and not a, a sideways angle. So all those things put together makes this lock very, very reliable. Um, the testing that I've done with, with this lock have been very, very good. We've had good results. Uh, lock wears very, very small, but if it does happen, if it does get to the point where it wears, which will take a very long time, it wears itself in towards the blade. It wears, sorry, it wears the, the, the blade, blade away, and like I said, reliability goes up. So yeah, we send out a guarantee with our locks that there will be no vertical blade play or lock rock issues uh, or lock slip issues because it's because of the system so we're quite confident with it okay jason and uh how's how's uh, life uh, business in south africa going oh it's not bad we um i think a lot of us mainly deal with the states uh the other guys have got a lot of, a lot of interest in in us and we've got a good uh, reputation here in in in, in america so we're trying to live up to those standards and oh, it's good. Yeah. That was a great presentation by Jason. It really got me to thinking about the fail-safe mechanism designed by Bob Terzuola because he's talking about this lock face on the tang and this um, wearing against it. So this thing, well, actually this thing starts out straight and this uh, is on an arc okay so the obvious thing that instead of this thing being straight after a while it's going to wear the arc in, in there and uh, Jason says that the more this wears in the better the lock becomes so I'm getting more curious that perhaps this failsafe design for a uh, frame lock or liner lock is a, a benefit. So I'm going to do a little more thinking on that, a little more research. But from what he says, it gives some su support to the idea.